flute, children, death, sorrow. These elements converge in the haunting tale of the Pied Piper, a figure whose legacy stretches from medieval Hamelin to the eerie realms of Pennywise and Freddy Krueger. His melody, both liberating and foreboding, serves as a grim reminder of the consequences of betrayal. Echoing through time, this spectral tune forms a ghostly bridge from ancient vengeance to the sinister corridors of modern horror, reflecting the dire outcomes of broken trust. This narrative, rich in moral and supernatural undertones, immerses us in a world where forsaken promises invoke divine fury. The Piper's Enduring Saga poses a critical question. What is the cost of a broken promise? A leg, a arm, a child, your soul? Welcome to another episode of Plaid Chronicles. A question that resonates through the ages, compelling us to contemplate the enduring significance of fidelity and the relentless grip of age-old myths. In the shadowed cobblestone streets of medieval Hamelin, whispers of a mysterious figure wove into the fabric of folklore, giving life to a legend that has echoed through the ages. The Pied Piper, as history recalls him, emerged not as a mere wanderer, but as a harbinger of a profound moral lesson that resonated deeply with the ethos of the 12th and 13th centuries. This tale, sewn into the tapestry of time, stands as a testament to the intricate dance between morality, justice, and the supernatural that defined the medieval worldview. The story unfolds in a Hamelin beleaguered by a devastating rat infestation, a scourge that threatened the very foundations of its society. From the murky mists of uncertainty, a figure emerged, the Piper, cloaked in enigma and wielding an otherworldly ability to charm rats with his haunting melodies. His music, like an ethereal whisper, led the vermin away, liberating Hamelin from its plague. Yet, this triumph of human cunning over nature's menace was short-lived. When the townsfolk reneged on their promise to pay for his services, the piper's melody took a sinister turn. In a chilling act of retribution, he led away something far more precious than rats, the children of Hamelin. This narrative, deeply rooted in the medieval moral framework, speaks volumes about the values and beliefs of the time. Oaths and promises were not mere words, but sacred bonds inviolable and steeped in spiritual significance. The Piper's actions seen through the lens of this era transform from mere vengeance to divine judgment. He becomes a vessel of cosmic justice, meting out a penalty for broken promises and deceit. In this light, the Piper transcends his role as a mere character in folklore, embodying the fears and ethical standards of medieval society. But what does this tale reveal about the nature of justice and morality in medieval Europe how does it reflect the societal dynamics where divine retribution was seen as an inevitable response to moral failings? These questions probe the heart of the legend, unearthing the underlying fears and beliefs that shaped the medieval psyche. In a time when the supernatural was intertwined with the everyday, the Piper's mystical abilities were not mere fancy, but a manifestation of the era's understanding of the divine and the otherworldly. His music, a tool of enchantment, symbolized the power of unseen forces that could either bless or curse the mortal realm. The children's disappearance, thus, was not just a physical loss, but a spiritual admonition, a reminder of the consequences of straying from the path of righteousness. Promises are the uniquely human way of ordering the future, a sentiment that echoes the medieval belief in the sanctity of oaths. This narrative of the Pied Piper, then, serves as a parable of accountability and the high price of duplicity. It underscores a societal structure where divine providence was inextricably linked to human actions, where celestial judgment was meted out in response to earthly transgressions. In exploring this legend, we delve into a world where the lines between the natural and the supernatural blur, where human actions invoke celestial reactions, and where morality is enforced not just by societal norms, but by the very fabric of the universe. The story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin, in its chilling simplicity, offers a window into the medieval soul, 
revealing a society that sought to understand and navigate the complexities of moral conduct in a world where the divine was an ever-present reality. In recounting this tale, we are invited to ponder, in a world where promises held the weight of divine law, what becomes of a society that breaks them? This question, lingering in the echoes of the Piper's melody, challenges us to reflect on the enduring power of legend and the timeless lessons it imparts. In the early 13th century, a wave of youthful fervor swept across Europe, a phenomenon as mystifying as it was tragic. This was the Children's Crusade of 1212, an event that much like the enigmatic notes of the Pied Piper's flute, lured thousands of children into a journey marked by hope and overshadowed by despair. In this tale, entwined with the very fabric of medieval society, lies a poignant reflection on innocence, faith, and the perils of misguided zeal. The Children's Crusade began as a grassroots movement, driven by the unwavering belief that pure-hearted children could succeed where armed adults had failed in reclaiming the Holy Land. Fueled by religious fervor and tales of miracles, bands of children from France and Germany embarked on a pilgrimage, convinced that the Mediterranean would part for them, much like the Red Sea for Moses. However, this journey, led by charismatic adolescent figures like the French shepherd Stephen of Cloy and the German boy Nicholas, was doomed from the outset. Their odyssey unraveled into a harrowing tale of hardship, exploitation, and loss. Many perished from starvation, disease, or exposure. Others were sold into slavery. None reached the Holy Land. This ill-fated crusade thus became a dark chapter in the annals of history, a testament to the era's complex interplay of innocence, faith, and tragedy. The story resonates powerfully with the legend of the Pied Piper of Hamelin, echoing its themes of lost innocence and the dangers of blindly following a charismatic leader. In both narratives, children are at the heart of the story, symbols of purity and hope, yet vulnerable to manipulation and deceit. The Pied Piper, with his enchanting music, mirrors the persuasive allure of the crusade leaders, both leading children away from the safety of their homes into the unknown. The cultural significance of these tales lies in their reflection of medieval society's attitudes towards children and innocence. In a time when children were often seen as miniature adults, these narratives underscore a growing awareness of the uniqueness of childhood and the need to protect its innocence. The tragic outcome of the Children's Crusade, much like the disappearance of Hamelin's children, serves as a cautionary tale about the vulnerability of the young and the responsibility of society to safeguard them. This era, steeped in religious zeal, also witnessed an unprecedented mobilization of faith. The Crusade was a manifestation of a society where spiritual conviction could move mountains or, in this case, propel thousands of children on a perilous quest. It demonstrates the powerful influence of religious ideology in shaping the actions and beliefs of medieval Europeans. The narratives also delve into the concept of leadership and its potential consequences. The Crusade's youthful leaders, though driven by noble intentions, were ultimately unable to protect or guide their followers effectively. This failure highlights the critical importance of wise and responsible leadership, a theme equally evident in the Pied Piper story, where the town's leader's failure to honor their promise leads to disaster. In the words of historian Stephen Runciman, the Children's Crusade was the most extraordinary and the most pathetic episode in the history of the Crusades. This statement encapsulates the essence of the tale, a poignant blend of youthful idealism and harsh reality. It invites reflection on how history is often shaped not just by the actions of the powerful, but also by the dreams and aspirations of the young and vulnerable. The Children's Crusade, much like the Pied Piper's tale, leaves us with a haunting question. How does a society reconcile its highest ideals with the protection and nurturing of its most innocent members? This question, echoing through the corridors of time, challenges us to ponder the lessons of the past and their relevance in our own era. In exploring the Children's Crusade through the lens of the Pied Piper legend, 
we gain not only a deeper understanding of medieval society, but also timeless insights into the nature of faith, innocence, and the human condition. These stories, woven into the fabric of history, continue to captivate and enlighten, reminding us of the enduring power of narrative to shape our understanding of the world. In the tumultuous tapestry of the 14th century, a shadow darker than any before it descended upon Europe. This was the era of the Black Death, a pestilence so deadly and pervasive that it left an indelible mark on the collective psyche of the continent. Amidst this backdrop of despair and confusion emerged a narrative that encapsulated the fears and struggles of the time, the tale of the Pied Piper of Hamelin, reimagined as an allegory of the Black Death. In this haunting version, the piper becomes a spectral embodiment of death itself, with the rat symbolizing the bubonic plague and his act of leading the children away, mirroring the indiscriminate and unexplainable nature of the pandemic. The story of the Pied Piper in this context transcends its origins as a simple folktale, morphing into a profound allegorical representation of one of the darkest periods in human history. The Piper, with his enigmatic presence and irresistible melody, becomes a metaphor for the plague that swept across Europe, leaving death and despair in its wake. The rats, previously a mere nuisance in the tale, take on a more sinister meaning, embodying the disease that infiltrated cities and countryside alike, unstoppable and relentless in its spread. This allegorical version of the Pied Piper tale sheds light on the medieval mind grappling with the incomprehensible horror of the Black Death. The plague, which claimed the lives of an estimated one-third of Europe's population, was a catastrophe of such scale and magnitude that it defied contemporary understanding. In an age where scientific knowledge was limited, the sudden and devastating impact of the plague was often attributed to supernatural or divine forces. The Pied Piper in this narrative stands as a symbol of these unseen, unfathomable powers, leading the young and innocent away in a grim parallel to the countless lives lost to the plague. The significance of this interpretation lies not only in its reflection of the period's immense tragedy, but also in its depiction of the human response to such an event. The Pied Piper, as an allegory for the plague, embodies the medieval struggle to make sense of the senseless, to find meaning in the midst of chaos. This narrative underscores the profound sense of helplessness and despair that pervaded Europe during the Black Death, as communities were ravaged and families torn apart by an unseen enemy. In the words of the 14th century writer Giovanni Boccaccio, who witnessed the Black Death firsthand, in the face of so much affliction and misery, all respect for the laws of God and man had virtually broken down and been extinguished in our city. This sentiment echoes the despair and moral decay that is subtly suggested in the Pied Piper narrative, the idea that in times of great suffering and confusion, the very fabric of society can unravel. But what does this allegorical interpretation of the Pied Piper tell us about the way medieval society processed and memorialized collective trauma. How did this narrative help them navigate the uncharted waters of one of history's worst pandemics? This question probes into the heart of the legend, revealing its role as a collective coping mechanism, a way for people to articulate and come to terms with the immense grief and fear that the plague brought. In portraying the Piper as an allegorical figure of death, the story also reflects the medieval fascination with and fear of the macabre. Death was a constant, looming presence in the lives of 14th century Europeans, and the Piper, in his role as a harbinger of doom, personifies this preoccupation with mortality. The tale becomes a canvas on which the anxieties and terrors of an entire era are painted, a narrative embodiment of the dance of death that was all too real for those who lived through the Black Death. In exploring the Pied Piper as an allegory of the Black Death, we delve into a narrative that is as much about the human response to disaster as it is about the disaster itself. The tale, in its dark and allegorical form, becomes a mirror reflecting the fears, beliefs, and struggles of a society 
confronting an unprecedented crisis. It reminds us that stories, in their most powerful form, are not just entertainment, but a means of understanding and navigating the complexities of the human experience. As the sun set on the Middle Ages and Europe transitioned into the Renaissance, a new interpretation of the Pied Piper of Hamelin emerged, resonating deeply with the socio-economic shifts of the 15th and 16th centuries. In this era of exploration and transformation, the Pied Piper was no longer just a mystical figure. He became a symbol of the economic and social forces compelling young people to leave their familiar environs in search of better opportunities. This narrative, steeped in the realities of the time, offers a window into the hopes and hardships that defined an age of change and discovery. The original tale in this interpretation takes on a more worldly aspect. Hamlin's rat infestation and the piper's enchanting solution become metaphors for the socioeconomic plagues of famine and feudal oppression. The piper, with his irresistible melody, represents the allure of new lands and the promise of a better life, drawing the youth away from the suffocating grip of medieval societal structures. As the piper leads the children away, he symbolizes the exodus of young people from rural areas to burgeoning cities, or even across seas to unknown continents. This version of the Pied Piper story reflects the significant socio-economic conditions of the time. Europe was undergoing profound changes, the feudal system was waning, cities were growing, and the age of exploration was dawning. Young people, especially from rural areas, often found themselves with limited opportunities and faced the harsh realities of servitude and poverty. The lure of urban centers with the promise of employment and a new way of life was irresistible to many. The significance of this interpretation lies in its portrayal of the human cost of these transformations. The children's departure from Hemelin becomes a poignant metaphor for the migration of young people highlighting both the hope for a better future and the sense of loss experienced by those left behind. It speaks to the universal theme of seeking a better life, a narrative that resonates across ages and cultures. In the words of Niccolo Machiavelli, whosoever desires constant success must change his conduct with the times. This sentiment encapsulates the essence of the era and the spirit of the Pied Piper narrative. The story in this context becomes a reflection of the adaptive nature of human societies, the relentless pursuit of improvement, and the inevitable changes that such pursuits bring about. But what does this interpretation of the Pied Piper tell us about the human experience during this transformative era? How did it reflect the hopes, fears, and realities of a society on the cusp of the modern world? These questions delve into the heart of the narrative, revealing its role as a socioeconomic commentary, a mirror reflecting the challenges and aspirations of an era. The tale also touches on the theme of loss, not just the physical loss of the young generation, but the emotional and cultural loss felt by communities. The Piper's act of leading the children away symbolizes the breaking of familial and communal bonds, a sacrifice often made in the quest for a better life. This aspect of the story resonates with the sense of displacement and dislocation that accompanied the socioeconomic shifts of the time. Furthermore, the Pied Piper in this interpretation becomes a complex character embodying both hope and sorrow. His role as a catalyst for change underscores the dual nature of progress. While it opens new horizons, it also demands sacrifices. The story thus becomes a nuanced exploration of the costs and rewards of change, a narrative that captures the essence of a society in transition. In exploring the Pied Piper of Hamelin through the lens of the emigration theory, we gain insights into the dynamics of societal change and the human responses to these changes. The tale, in its allegorical richness, becomes more than just a folk tale. It transforms into a historical narrative that speaks to the enduring themes of hope, sacrifice, and the pursuit of a better life. It reminds us 
that stories in their most profound form are not just entertainment but a means of understanding and reflecting upon the complexities of our shared human journey. In the mist-shrouded landscapes of pre-Christian Europe, where the rhythms of nature were intimately woven into the fabric of daily life, a different version of the Pied Piper of Hamelin takes root, one steeped in the rich soil of pagan rituals and ancient beliefs. In this interpretation, the Piper is no mere mortal, but a representation of a pagan deity or spirit intimately connected with the natural world and its cycles. His act of leading the children away from Hamelin becomes a symbolic reenactment of age-old rituals of seasonal transition or fertility rites deeply embedded in the collective consciousness of the people. This original tale, set against the backdrop of a Europe where pagan beliefs were prevalent, paints the piper as a mythical figure embodying the forces of nature and the mysteries of the earth. His enchanting music and compelling presence are reminiscent of the captivating allure of the natural world and its deities, revered and feared in equal measure by the ancient peoples. The children's disappearance in this narrative is not a punitive act but a spiritual journey, a rite of passage deeply entwined with the mysteries of life, death, and rebirth. The significance of this pagan ritual interpretation lies in its exploration of the spiritual and cultural landscape of pre-Christian Europe. It reveals how ancient rituals and beliefs centered around the natural cycles and the veneration of earth deities were an integral part of the social and spiritual fabric of the time. The story of the Pied Piper in this context becomes a vessel through which the continuity and transformation of these ancient practices can be observed as they were gradually integrated, morphed, or even demonized with the advent of Christian traditions. But what does this interpretation tell us about the way ancient European societies understood their relationship with nature and the divine? How did the transformation of these pagan rituals into folklore narratives like the Pied Piper reflect the broader cultural and religious shifts of the era, these questions probe into the essence of the narrative, offering a window into the spiritual psyche of a world in transition. In the words of the Roman historian Tacitus, the Germans, however, do not consider it consistent with the grandeur of celestial beings to confine the gods within walls or to liken them to any human countenance. This sentiment encapsulates the essence of the pre-Christian belief systems that the Pied Piper narrative draws upon. The Piper, as a symbol of these ancient deities, represents a worldview where the divine was not confined to temples or human-like forms, but was an omnipresent force in the natural world. The tale in this interpretation also touches on the theme of transition, both in the sense of the changing seasons and in the broader context of societal and religious transformations. The Piper's act of leading the children away can be seen as a metaphor for the passage from one era to another, from a world governed by pagan beliefs to one dominated by Christian dogma. This aspect of the story reflects the often tumultuous process of cultural and religious change where old beliefs are reinterpreted or replaced by new ones. Furthermore, the Pied Piper, as a representation of pagan deities, becomes a complex character embodying both the awe-inspiring power of nature and the sorrow of a fading world. His role as a symbol of ancient rituals underscores the enduring human fascination with the mysteries of life and the forces that govern it. The story thus becomes a poignant exploration of the loss of ancient traditions and the longing for a more mystical connection with the world. In exploring the Pied Piper of Hamelin through the lens of the pagan ritual interpretation, we gain insights into the spiritual and cultural dynamics of pre-Christian Europe. The tale, in its allegorical richness, becomes more than just a folk tale. It transforms into a narrative that captures the essence of a society grappling with the mysteries of nature and the divine. It reminds us that stories in their most profound form are not just entertainment, 
but a means of understanding and reflecting upon the complexities of our shared human heritage. As the Renaissance dawned and Europe began to stir from the long slumber of the Middle Ages, a new understanding of society and its obligations started to take shape. This was the era of the early modern social contract, a period marked by profound philosophical and political change. Within this crucible of transformation, the story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin was reborn, no longer just a folktale, but a parable reflecting the evolving concepts of social justice, civic responsibility, and the repercussions of failing to honor the social contract. In this interpretation of the tale, the Pied Piper stands as a symbol of the emerging ideals of the time. His actions are seen not just as revenge for a broken promise, but as a broader commentary on the responsibilities that leaders and citizens owe to each other. When the townspeople of Hamlin refuse to pay the piper for ridding their town of rats, they breach not just a financial agreement, but a fundamental social contract. The piper's response, leading their children away, becomes a metaphor for the consequences of a society's failure to uphold justice and fairness. This narrative gains its significance from the context of the 16th and 17th centuries, a time when thinkers like Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, and Jean-Jacques Rousseau were laying the groundwork for modern political philosophy. They proposed that society is based on a contract between the governed and their governors, a contract that demands mutual respect and adherence to agreed upon rules. The Piper's tale in this light can be seen as a reflection of these emerging ideas. It underscores the importance of trust and reciprocity in societal relationships and warns of the chaos that ensues when these are disregarded. But what does this interpretation tell us about the way societies understand and enforce the obligations between individuals and their leaders? How did the transformation of the Pied Piper story into a narrative of social contract reflect the changing perceptions of governance and justice in the early modern period? These questions take us to the heart of the story, revealing its enduring relevance as a commentary on social and political dynamics. As John Locke famously stated, wherever law ends, tyranny begins. This quote resonates with the essence of the Pied Piper story in its early modern interpretation. The breach of contract by the citizens of Hamelin can be seen as a microcosm of the broader societal struggles of the time. The Piper, in enforcing his own brand of justice, symbolizes the chaos and tyranny that can ensue when societal contracts are broken and laws are disregarded. The narrative also offers a poignant reflection on the theme of responsibility and accountability. The piper, as a figure demanding justice, forces the townspeople to confront the consequences of their actions. His role highlights the importance of accountability and governance and the potential repercussions when it is absent. This aspect of the story mirrors the societal upheavals of the early modern period as Europe grappled with the transition from feudalism to more centralized forms of governance. Furthermore, the tale of the Pied Piper in this context becomes a cautionary tale about the delicate balance of power within a society. It reflects the tensions between the rulers and the ruled and the necessity of maintaining a harmonious social contract for the well-being of the community. The loss of Hamlin's children symbolizes the far-reaching consequences when this balance is upset, serving as a stark reminder of the fragility of societal order. In exploring the Pied Piper of Hamelin through the lens of the early modern social contract, we delve into a narrative that is as much about the social and political upheavals of its time as it is about a colorful figure from folklore. The story, in its allegorical richness, becomes more than just a cautionary tale. It transforms into a historical commentary that captures the essence of a society in transition. It reminds us that legends and folk tales in their most profound form are not just entertainment, but powerful reflections of the human struggle to understand and navigate the complexities of social existence. In the midst of the 19th century, 
a period enraptured by the allure of the past and the mysteries beyond the veil of the known, the story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin underwent a profound metamorphosis. This was the Victorian era, a time when romantic sensibilities intertwined with a renewed interest in medieval lore, casting old tales in new, more emotionally charged hues. The Pied Piper, a figure long embedded in European folklore, emerged anew. No longer just a harbinger of justice or a mysterious wanderer, but as a mystical, almost tragic character, embodying the era's fascination with the supernatural, the emotional, and the enigmatic. In this Victorian reinterpretation, the Pied Piper story is steeped in a sense of loss, mystery, and a profound connection to the supernatural. The tale becomes less about a man exacting revenge on a town for a broken promise and more about a spectral figure bound by forces beyond mortal understanding caught in a narrative that explores the depths of human emotions and the inexplicable. This Piper is a tragic hero, a being whose actions are as much a mystery to himself as they are to the townsfolk of Hamelin. The significance of this version lies in its reflection of the Victorian era's preoccupations. This was a time marked by a complex relationship with the past and a deep fascination with the unseen. The Victorian Romantic Revival saw a resurgence of interest in medieval themes, art, and literature, driven by a nostalgia for an age perceived as simpler and more connected to the spiritual. The supernatural elements of the Pied Piper tale resonated with this longing for a world where the mystical was real and palpable. But what does this transformation of the Pied Piper story reveal about the Victorian psyche and its approach to the mysteries of life and the unknown. How did this narrative capture the essence of an era so deeply invested in exploring what lay beyond the borders of the known world? These questions invite us to delve deeper into the story's layers, revealing its relevance as a mirror reflecting the societal and cultural undercurrents of the time. In the words of the Victorian poet Alfred Lord Tennyson, there lives more faith in honest doubt, believe me, than in half the creeds. This sentiment captures the essence of the Victorian reinterpretation of the Pied Piper. The story, in this era, becomes a vehicle for exploring the complexities of faith, doubt, and the human condition. The Piper's enigmatic nature and his inexplicable act of leading the children away become symbols of the eternal human quest to understand the mysteries of existence. The narrative also touches on themes of loss and the yearning for a connection to something greater than oneself. The disappearance of the children in the story is imbued with a sense of tragedy and mystery, reflecting the Victorian era's preoccupation with death and the afterlife. The Piper, in leading the children into the unknown, symbolizes the journey into the great mystery that lies beyond life a theme that deeply resonated in a time when mortality was ever-present. Furthermore, the Victorian version of the Pied Piper tale becomes a commentary on the emotional and moral complexities of the human heart. The story delves into the depths of sorrow, regret, and the unexplained, embodying the Romantic era's fascination with the inner workings of the human psyche. The Piper's actions and the townsfolk's reactions are no longer black and white, but are shades of gray, reflecting the era's nuanced view of morality and emotion. In exploring the Pied Piper of Hamelin through the lens of the Victorian Romantic Revival, we gain a deeper understanding of how this era reimagined and reinterpreted traditional folklore to reflect its own values, fears, and fascinations. The story in its 19th century incarnation, becomes a rich tapestry of emotional depth and supernatural intrigue, a reflection of a society grappling with the complexities of a rapidly changing world. It reminds us that legends and myths, in their most powerful form, are not static tales, but living narratives that evolve and adapt to echo the heartbeat of the times they pass through. In the shadowy realms of folklore and modern horror cinema, there exists a fascinating thread of continuity, weaving through centuries-old legends and contemporary nightmares. At the heart of this eerie tapestry 
lies the figure of the Pied Piper of Hamelin, a spectral harbinger whose motifs and themes find a chilling echo in two of the most iconic horror characters of modern times, the menacing Pennywise from Stephen King's It and the nightmarish Freddy Krueger from the A Nightmare on Elm Street series. This exploration delves into the argument that these contemporary horror legends, with their deep psychological undertones and themes of retribution and innocence lost, are in many ways an extension of the ancient Pied Piper legend. The original tale of the Pied Piper carries with it themes of betrayal, revenge, and the loss of innocence, elements that are starkly mirrored in both it and A Nightmare on Elm Street. The Pied Piper, wronged by the townsfolk of Hamelin, exacts his revenge in a manner that is both terrifying and tragic, leading the innocent children away to an unknown fate. This theme of retribution for past wrongs is a central motif in both horror stories, where the antagonists, Pennywise and Freddy Krueger, are driven by a similar desire for revenge. Pennywise, the shape-shifting entity in It, preys on the fears and innocence of the children of Derry, much like the Pied Piper lures away the children of Hamelin. Pennywise's ability to tap into the deepest fears of his victims mirrors the Piper's hypnotic influence over the children, both using their unique abilities to devastating effect. The town of Derry, like Hamlin, is portrayed as a place with a dark secret, a community complicit in the horrors that unfold, paralleling the broken promise and collective guilt in the Pied Piper story. Freddy Krueger, the malevolent figure haunting the dreams of Elm Street's teenagers, shares the Pied Piper's vengeful spirit. Freddy's backstory of being wronged by the parents of Elm Street and his subsequent return to exact revenge reflects the Piper's return to Hamelin to avenge the town's betrayal. Freddy's targeting of teenagers, representative of innocence transitioning into adulthood, echoes the Pied Piper's focus on the children of Hamelin, symbolizing the loss of innocence and the consequences of past sins. In both It and A Nightmare on Elm Street, the theme of a community's collective responsibility for the horrors that befall their children is a prominent thread that ties back to the Pied Piper. The adults in both stories are portrayed as either dismissive, unbelieving, or complicit in the unfolding terror, similar to the townsfolk of Hamelin, who fail to uphold their promise, leading to the loss of their children. This motif highlights the broader societal issues of accountability and the failure to protect the innocent. The psychological depth of these horror stories where fear and guilt manifest in such visceral ways, resonates with the Pied Piper's more abstract but equally haunting punishment of Hamelin. The emotional and psychological terror inflicted on the characters in It and A Nightmare on Elm Street serves as a modern reflection of the ancient fear of retribution and the unknown that is so palpable in the Pied Piper legend. Stephen King, the author of It, once said, Monsters are real, and ghosts are real too. They live inside us, and sometimes they win. This quote encapsulates the essence of these narratives, where the real horror lies not just in the supernatural entities, but in the human capacity for wrongdoing and the consequences that follow. The Pied Piper, Pennywise, and Freddy Krueger are embodiments of these internal and external horrors, reflecting the timeless human struggle with guilt, fear, and the consequences of one's actions. In examining the Pied Piper alongside Pennywise and Freddy Krueger, one cannot help but ponder, do these modern horror tales serve as cautionary fables in the same vein as the Pied Piper, warning of the repercussions of societal transgressions? This question invites the audience to explore the deeper meanings and connections between these stories revealing how ancient legends continue to influence and shape modern narratives. The exploration of the Pied Piper legend through the lens of it and a nightmare on Elm Street uncovers a rich vein of thematic continuity that spans centuries. It reveals how the core themes of retribution, the loss of innocence, and the consequences of societal failings remain potent and relevant, resonating through the ages in ever-evolving forms. 
These stories, both ancient and modern, serve as a mirror reflecting the unchanging nature of certain human fears and the eternal quest to confront and understand the darker aspects of our existence. Take that! If this narrative resonated with you, do support us. Hit that like button, drop a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe. Thank you for staying with us to the end. See you in the next video on Plaid Chronicles.